Hi guys. This is D. Igorotech. Today, I will show you how to configure the FortiGate firewall addresses. We will create a subnet, IP range, FQDN or fully qualified domain name, and also geography. Also, I will show you how to use these firewall addresses. You may check my previous videos on this playlist for you to get along. Let's begin, go to Policy and Objects. Addresses. These are the pre-configured addresses by default. Well, this depends on the 40 OS version. If you look at the interface subnet, you can see these addresses and interfaces that has been automatically created when we configure the LAN and VLAN interfaces. Under the Reference column, you can see the reference numbers. If you click on it, it will show that this address has a reference of four which are firewall policies. First is the DNS which has a policy ID of three. The policy name which is DNS. The security profiles enabled for this policy. Etc. We can also see the HTTP, HTTPS policy with a policy ID of two. You can view all the references here. Now, let's create an address. Click on Create New. We have two options which are Address and Address Group. Since we will create an address then we will choose the address. If we click Type, we can see the different address types. The Subnet, IP Range, FQDN, Geography, Dynamic and Device MAC Address. We will create addresses for each one by one. First is we will create a subnet. We will create a subnet for my computer connected to this device. We can open the command prompt and then run the command IP config. We can see my device IP address is 192.168.1.22 in the default gateway which we use to access the 40 gate. We can copy the IP address. Now, go back to the addresses. Give a name based on your preference. You can also change the logo color from here. Again, we will create a subnet. We can paste or you can manually enter the IP address followed by a slash and also the subnet mask. We will use slash 32 since this subnet is only for my computer. Slash 32 is only one usable host. For the interface, we can leave it to any so that we can use this address for any of the interfaces when configuring the policies. You can also specify using your internal interface since this subnet is a member of the internal or admin. You can enable the static route configuration. This is if you plan to use this subnet to configure static routes, usually for VPN configuration. Instead of entering the IP net mask, we can simply use this address. I will show you later on. Comments is optional. Click OK to apply the changes. You can see the created address. Notice the color we used earlier. The name. Details which is the IP net mask. Type is address. Reference is zero because we haven't configured any policy yet using this address. If we check back again this address, we enabled this static route configuration. Now, let's open the static route configuration to a new tab. Let's try to create a new route. If we change the destination to a named address, the newly created subnet will be displayed here. If you disabled the static route configuration then it wouldn't be displayed here. You can see the details. The address name, type, subnet, interface, comments and reference. You have the option to directly edit from here as well. This is very useful especially if you have multiple subnets. You can add all in one group and then use the group to create a static route. Next is we will create an IP range address. Click on create new again. Choose address. Give a name based on your preference. Change the color if you prefer. This time we will choose the IP range. Notice that once we change to an IP range, the icon will be changed to a range symbol as well. Notice the icon difference between different types of addresses. Now, enter the IP address range. In my case, the range will start from 192.168.1.1 until 192.168.1.20. This range has approximately 20 hosts. For the interface, 
we will use any. Again, you can specify using the internal or admin since this range is within that subnet. This depends on your preference. I usually use any. Comments is optional. Click OK to apply the changes. We have now created two addresses which are the office admin range and the subnet address which is Zach. Next is we will create FQDN or a fully qualified domain name. For this demo, we will use YouTube as an example. We will give a name of YouTube for our reference. Change the color if you prefer. For the type, we will choose FQDN. Now, enter the domain name, in my case it's youtube.com. FQDN is also referred as the domain name or website. The interface should be any. Again, enable static route configuration if you plan to use it on a static route. Comments is optional. Click OK to apply the changes. If you look at the newly created FQDN address, there's an exclamation or error. It says, unresolved FQDN and the domain name which is youtube.com. Since we are connected to the internet then it will automatically resolve the domain name. Simply refresh the page. Now it's been resolved. If you still see the exclamation then check the domain name, maybe it's incorrect so it failed to resolve. Alternatively, we can also create FQDN using the wildcard. Let's use Facebook as an example so let's give a name of Facebook. Change the color if you prefer. Type would be FQDN. Now, for the FQDN, first is put the special character which is asterisk followed by dot then the domain name. Wildcard match zero or more characters so that you don't have to specify an entire path or value, or set of values. The interface should be any. Enable static route configuration if you plan to use it for static routes. Comments is optional. Click OK to apply the changes. When the wildcard FQDN has been configured, it will show as unresolved FQDN. It will be updated when a DNS query is made from a host connected to FortiGate. Next is we will create a geography-based address. This is where you create an address by country or by region. Let's create a geography-based address for Philippines so we will give a name of Philippines. Change the color if you prefer. Type is geography. For the country or region, click on it to view all the options. You can scroll down and choose the country or we can use the search option. The interface should be any. Comments is optional. Click OK to apply the changes. Scroll down and under geography you can see the address we created which is Philippines. We will create a policy using this address later on. Next is we will create address group. First is we will create an address group for the admin users which is the office admin range and the subnet address which is Zach. We will also create an address group for the FQDN which is the Facebook and YouTube. Click create new. Now, we will choose the address group. We will give a name of admin group for our reference. We can also change the color. Type should be group. For the members, click the plus sign to add addresses. We will look for the office admin and Zach. For the exclude members, you can enable this option if you want to exclude address or addresses on this group. An example is if you want to exclude 192.168.1.7 which is within this range. First is create a subnet address then enable the exclude members and add that address. For this demo, we're not going to enable this option. Notice that the static route configuration is grayed out. This is because we did not enable that option on the address range. If you want to use the group on static route then make sure you enable the static route configuration on all of the members. Comments is optional. Click OK to apply the changes. Scroll down and you will see the newly created address group. The name which is admin groups and the details which are the members. Next is we will create an address group for the FQDN addresses. Same process again. We will give a name of FQDN group. You can change the color if you prefer. Type is group. For the members, we will add the Facebook and YouTube FQDN addresses. You can do the same process for the rest. Click OK to apply the changes. Scroll down and under address group you will see the newly created FQDN group and also the members. Now, 
let's create a policy for these addresses. Go to Firewall Policy. We are going to clone and modify one of the current policies. We will give a name of admin group to Facebook and YouTube. The incoming interface should be the internal because these addresses are within the internal network. The outgoing interface will be the WAN1 which is our primary. For the source, we will use the group we just created. You can also see the members here. Well, you can use the addresses if you prefer. Remove the internal address because we want this policy only for the admin group. For the destination, we will select the FQDN address group which we just created. Schedule to always. For the services, since the destinations are domain names or websites then we will choose HTTP and HTTPS. We can use the same security profile since we created this policy earlier for HTTP and HTTPS traffic as well. Modify or remove the comments if you want. Make sure to enable the policy. Click OK to apply the changes. You can now see the newly created policy. The name which is admin group to Facebook and YouTube. Source is the admin group address. Destination is the FQDN group which are Facebook and YouTube. Schedule to always. Services of HTTP and HTTPS. NAT enabled. Security profiles, etc. I hope by now you know how to configure addresses and address groups. Well, that's all for today's demonstration and I really hope you liked this video. If you are new to my channel, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe and click on the notification bell for more amazing tutorials. Thank you and see you in the next video.